to have you guys all with us tonight and celebrate everything that we've done together with Jacqueline on Champagne Pop. I'm, I, I might be the CEO of Becca, but Jacqueline says that I'm actually her cosmetics dad, so I think that is, <laughs> has a great privilege to be, to be truthful. Uh, we all love Jacqueline, and I think it's great that you guys are here to celebrate this with us. Today's video I've been wanting to film for literally so many months now that it's not even funny. Today is the grand reveal of my sister collection with Morphe that I've been working on for over a year now and I am so beyond excited to show you guys everything that we have in store. This is the Michaela X Glam Light Pack 2 palette. I have been working on this since the first collection and it's finally here, oh my gosh. I am wearing it on my eyes. I literally, this collection is next level. Try being an influencer for a day, try it. Because the people who say it's easy are so far out of their minds, try it for a day. I want to go buy Jeffree Star's recommendation. I want to buy Michaela's recommendations, and I want to buy James Charles' new palette. Let's buy Nikki Tutorials' line. I, here's the thing, I already bought Jackie Aina candles. Shout out to you, the fruiting the baddest bitch. Like, I want to try out the recommendations. Is it hot fire? Like, I want to know. But before I do so, this is our community. I need to hear from you guys. Are you okay with this? Here's the deal. She's going to shout out these products and she's obviously going to get them glowing reviews. She's mm -hmm. going to talk about Jeans Palette. She's going to say it's amazing. She's going to say it's amazing about Jeffree Star as well. So by her doing that, those products are going to sell out. So people are looking at it as, well, you're still putting the money into their pockets. Yep. Even if you're saying that you're just reviewing it, you bought it with your own money, everyone's going to take your word and they're going to run out and buy it. Yep. So she knows what she's doing. She just wants to stir up a little controversy at the beginning of the year and support these problematic people. Hi, everyone. It's me again. And I'm proposing a new intro because the owner of Squishmallow has said some really weird things, unsatisfactory, not unsatisfactory, just tasteful, also just grossly Zionist really at the end of the day, things regarding the uh, conflict in Israel and Palestine. Well, the, I can't say the word, trust me, I know what you're thinking, that word, because of the internet. Anyway, so I don't have a intro like that anymore. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Anyway, thoughts in the comments, please. Now, today we're going to be doing a sort of, I'm trying to make sure that my mic is picking up everything. We're going to do another sort of get ready with me style video as I always do when I dive into the beauty influencer universe. Today we're going to step out of the YouTuber realm and dive into Miss Ma'am, the TikTok beauty influencers. First, Links, sources, ways to support the channel, Amazon wishlist, Patreon, YouTube memberships, all that stuff all down below. Along with my social media and an email to suggest content. The video will also have the tag that will have some people tagged below and a couple of other things that we'll get into further down the line. I'm also going to be doing my makeup as I mentioned, but also going to be including products that I really like and actually use and thing that's been sent to me or any of that. I will have that on screen. I am. I use if I have it sent to me and I don't like it, I get rid of it. Same thing as everything else. And there are some products I use from um, Gerard Cosmetics that I don't have a second of. That whole mess has been so confusing and I've been too anxious to try to figure it out because I don't want to get involved in personal things with people and I'm just kind of torn in the middle and I don't like it. So I'm just have the stuff there, use the products, don't really do anything else. Yeah, three parts of the video as per usual and uh let's get into it part one Michaela Naguera's self tanner debacle part two pat two uh glamzilla and supporting influencer brands and recommendations and part three a reflection on the power of the beauty influencer dollar I'm also gonna try my absolute darndest to actually show you what products I'm using because which this video goes into there are very few people who still honestly recommend things but every single thing I'm using you can see is well loved if you're looking for some beauty stuff you might like this would be the place I have some affiliate links down below but they're just like the ones that you get through like um, Mavely links where it's like 
commission on sale. It's not like signed up with the brand or anything like that. Most of the things aren't even really linked. So that's it. That's the, that's the, I'm giving you the full 100. So let's get right into the news. Part one, Michaela's self tanner debacle. So for those of you who clicked on this video and don't know necessarily who uh, Michaela Naguera is, she is a beauty influencer from Massachusetts. I can't do that accent right. Never mind. From Massachusetts who found herself in a lot of controversy last year, more or less coming through the uh, last few months based on entitlement as an influencer, but also like making dishonest, allegedly, because I want to get sued, or allegedly misleading videos about makeup products. A lot of stuff kind of in the vein of 2018 beauty influencer, 2017 beauty influencer, 2016, what have you, uh, style that people have gotten and have shown a pretty strongest take. Also, um, Michaela, people have a lot of distaste for her also because of making content revolving around products that people are able to point out as dishonest, but then she just pushes forward and doesn't actually acknowledge anything that happened. Most notably, the comments about how hard it is to be an influencer because she has to work past 5, 19 p.m., or until 5, 19 p.m. rather. Then I'm in meetings from 12 to 5. I literally just finished work and it's 5, 19. Try being an influencer for a day. Try it. Because the people who say it's easy are so far out of their minds. Try it for a day. And also the infamous uh, telescopic lift mascara review. You, This literally just changed my life. This looks like false light. This is how? What? <laughs> It's this L'Oreal telescopic lift. Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm going to add a second. Look at the length. Which, funny enough, this video is also going to kind of include a mascara review because I'm trying a new one today. But... That's neither here nor there. Given her history, people are very quick to come for her because of allegedly scammy practices. I've been putting the wrong shade in my description for so long. It's because this isn't my shade. Madeline, which I have a backup of now, is the better shade. So I'm just, I keep that one in there. Anyway, the self tanner debacle, which has been a pretty big thing in the drama channel sphere. But I know a lot of my audience isn't crazy about watching a lot of the mainstream uh, YouTube beauty guru covering channels. So I'll fill you in. There was a creator named Matthew Stevens who is the founder of a tanning company called Illusion Bronze, which comes from when he was, or he worked in the kind of celebrity sphere. He was Mariah Carey's assistant. And he saw that like big time celebrities were not using like tanners from Sephora or whatever, ha what have you. I don't really know tanner brands besides Bondi Sands, which we'll get to, but I don't know any other names of them. But anyway, they always had custom tanners mixed for them. They were not using the ones from the shelf because a lot of people are not able to really get matched from the ones on the shelves because of like undertone issues and things like that. So then they just look crusty and orange, allegedly. I don't really tan. Actually, if you want to see something, see how white I am right now? I just naturally tan like crazy, like this. Look at my face. This is the bronzer I use in the summertime. Each tan is mixed based on eye color, hair color, and skin tone, and has about, he said, 125 different color variations. So that is how he's been making the tans. The brand Bondi Sands, allegedly, hypothetically, in Minecraft, made a tanner range that had involved undertones to some degree that had four shades, as opposed to just one or two, you know, light or dark or what have you. And there was a quiz online that asked you your hair care, your uh, hair color, eye color, and skin tone to, to give you one of the, like essentially the best of the four to kind of, to, to kind of make the illusion, no pun intended, I guess that it's similar to illusion bronze in its concept. The issue is, is that illusion bronze does that because it's custom mixed, which is not at all the same as choice of four. It's just not the same, right? So Matthew Stevens, early into like the career of making these tanners, had reached out to smaller influencers to review it for him. And some of them did. And then hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, again, 
Bondi Sands reached out to a lot of those same people and was like, review our tanner. And they did. And this was so... It could kind of seem like it's like a similar product, according to Matthew. Michaela Naguera, at a time, last year-ish or something, would review more uh, indie brand products. She no longer really does this, and Matthew brings this up later because she says the issue was that there would be too much volume of people coming in, overloading the sales of those small companies, and sometimes they would be dishonest and say that they were going to have stock, but they didn't, and it was just sort of a pre-order situation, and people weren't getting their product, and then they were getting mad at Michaela, and yada, yada, yada. Hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, I think it's because an indie brand can't cut a check like Charlotte Tilbury. That's just my two cents. Matthew reached out to Michaela last year. It's around October. They started talking. So Matthew reached Matthew reached out to Michaela in October, kind of calling on to her to make a video using his tanner. And then very soon after he made that video, she made the review of the hypothetically allegedly Minecraft Bondi Sands tanner. The same one that Matthew alleges, but he doesn't name the brand, were trying to get people to review their tanner once they had already reviewed his. So then he kind of sees this as not a coincidence and gets a bit frustrated. And then him and Michaela get into contact. She says that she's going to review his tanner. She doesn't for a while. And then there's a video where she's going to a wedding. She apparently put left the tan on for too long or something. And then it looked really bad. She never ended up reviewing it, really. In a DM, she told Matthew that she was going to review it the next day. So he took a $10,000 loan out from Shopify anticipating the stock needed to put forward to sell the tan that Michaela would potentially bring, like attention to the tan that Michaela would bring to him. This video I posted wondering if it was a coincidence garnered 4 million views. Michaela DM'd me the next morning and said it was an absolute coincidence. It would never be my intention to hurt a small business. She said, I think I actually have your tanner. Regardless, when I get home, I will make my purchase and try your tanner ASAP. We DM back and forth for a while. She does say, I wish you would have come to me first. I was like, uh, how? So then she gave me her phone number, asked to speak on the phone. We talked for like 20 minutes. She was like, my parents are small business owners. They've experienced similar things. I was like, wow, this poor girl, like she's young. She's doing the best she can. Once she's home, she shows me that she has the product as well as shits all over my competitor, but I'm not going to blast that. And for a second, I really thought like, wow, maybe this misunderstanding is turning into a friendship. Well, in October, she told me she was posting it ASAP, and then two months passed by. I really just had grieved the idea and moved forward. I was like, damn, it's unfortunate that she really is the person that people say she is. I don't think that she understands that just because I don't have 15 million followers, I do have almost 72,000. And people tag her in my videos and ask me about her every single day now for the past three months. So one day when someone was in my live asking me where Michaela's review was, I said, guys, just let it go. And then people started going to her page and commenting, where's the Illusion Bronze review? They texted me almost immediately. I don't know if you mentioned me or something somewhere, but I'm getting so many comments about trying the tanner and I'm actually using it this weekend. She says, I'll be posting a video about it tomorrow, December 7th. Now in the past, Michaela made a video about how she doesn't review indie brands anymore because they can't keep up with the orders. There's been a few instances where the indie brand cannot handle the, uh, the capacity to fulfill all of those orders. I was a long-term fan and follower, so I remembered that video. And the last thing that I wanted to do was embarrass myself, my business, or her. And Shopify had kept offering me a $10,000 loan. So when she told me, I'm reviewing this tomorrow, I was like, let me take that loan. The money gets deposited within like 24 hours. And I spent all $10,000 on product. I honestly felt like that day was Christmas. I was so excited. I kept refreshing my TikTok feed. And when she finally posted, she clearly had a tan on, but it was hideous. Talking like beyond orange and the hands were a mess. I genuinely didn't understand with how my product line works, how she could turn out looking like that. 
Bill, I tried to find the least offensive photo of this tan I could find and texted her, you look beautiful. Here is my message below. I say I wish I could have given her tips and talked to her more about how long to leave it on for. When she and I were on the phone, Michaela wanted to make sure that my tan was a rapid tan, which it is. You leave it on one hour for light, two hours for medium, three hours for dark. She told me she doesn't like using tans that you leave on for a long time. But she told me she left on mine for 12 hours, so I'm like, is that why it turned out so bad? Still, she tells me she loves it. If you're unaware of this, Michaela usually posts in chronological order, so I'm like, if this is my tan, why didn't she post a review video? She said she was posting it today. Called my mom so upset. I'm like, mom, when she posts this video, no one is gonna wanna buy myself Tanner. Like, how did it turn out this way? And then my mom said, Matt, with all the orders you've had, has anybody ever told you they look orange? Have you ever seen a photo of someone who looks orange after using Illusion Bronze? And I was like, no. And then I went back and I looked at her full body and I realized she got a spray tan. Not only did she lie when she said she was posting a review the next day, but she lied to me pretending she even used it at all. Like, why not just say I didn't get a chance to use it? Why are you saying I slept in it and I love it? Just say you didn't have time. So for the next three weeks, I'm stewing. I'm like, where's the review? $10,000 worth of product showed up at my house. Finally, I'm like, listen, she doesn't know how much money I spent, so let me just tell her the situation and that it's stressing me out, and I know she'll make it right. Pause if you want to read, but basically I tell her three weeks earlier, I placed an order for $10,000 because I wanted to be prepared. And as someone who talks about their mental health so much, I wanted to let her know that I was really stressed out about this, and if she could find the energy to do a New Year's Eve tan, I would really appreciate it. Oh my God, well, the good news is you'll have the stop when the video is posted. She told me she didn't have time to make a review when she originally used the product, even though I now know she didn't use the product at all. Well, she did find the time to do a New Year's Eve tan. Now I'm gonna do my base. I am gonna match myself tan. But for some reason, she chose not to review mine in that moment, even knowing there was $10,000 worth of product sitting in my home. Now it's the second week of January, two weeks since I've told her about this, and she's gotten another spray tan. So she said she was posting it ASAP in October. The first week of December, she said, I'm posting the review tomorrow. Two weeks ago, I told her because she said that I ordered $10,000 worth of product. And she's had two tans since then, and not once did it cross her mind, hey, I really should post that review. This guy has all this product sitting in his house because of what I said to him. She doesn't care about me, my mental health, my finances, my stress, but she expects everyone else to care about her mental health. You're not the only one, babe. You're not the only one. I'm telling you guys this now because last night people were commenting on her videos saying, I support Matthew's small business, review Illusion Bronze. She responded, no. She responded, shut up. And she started blocking people. I've got 10K worth of product in my home so if you'd like to start out your new year with the only custom tan please visit illusion bronze and if you're not somebody who uses self tanner or can't afford it please follow me that's the biggest thing that you can do to help i want to make sure that i'm doing what i can to highlight small businesses this year for no compensation we need to be helping each other in 2024 not just ourselves this was the connection that matthew had made because of that indie brand video as i had mentioned before so he was just trying not to be in a position like other people had been. And this was because Michaela said this specifically. And he took that sort of as a forewarning, which I don't necessarily think was a bad thing or a stupid decision. I recorded some of his TikTok live yesterday. Uh, and I'll put a couple clips in now. But some people were being kind of weird about the whole thing. But it's because like he has defenders in Michaela's comments, there will be Michaela defenders in his comments naturally. That's kind of just how the course of the internet. Okay, hold on. I keep seeing the same things. If you've placed an order and you have not yet received a tracking order, it's because we've re received like a huge influx of orders to the point that all of that inventory was gone and even more is arriving on Tuesday. So everybody's order who's placed an order so far, your order hopefully will be out by the end of this week. I don't think anything of her reply video. I don't care. Your skin tone, it gives you a healthy little glow. Cool, Taya, I could give a flying fuck. Have you seen the Full Coverage podcast where they talk about you? No, what's the Full Coverage? Is that the Manny one? Hair color should be natural, yes. Thank you guys so much, thank you. I'm in a rental, so everybody always asks me. It's your fault that I lost 10,000? Well, I made it, um, I made it all back, babe. So that, that was last week, keep up. I had a, so many orders from the 11th, which was the first day that I posted the video. And it literally took us almost a week and a half to catch up on just those orders. So I, I think it's gonna be about another week of me catching up on the orders from the 12th till now. Do I like James Charles? James um, interacted with one of my videos. I wouldn't say that like him is the right. 
So then this is the KVD Mod Con Gel Contour. I've just used, I've literally used this so much that all of the labels have rubbed off. With Matthew coming to TikTok after a while, earlier this year, to show receipts that all of this had happened because he was kind of tired of being let on, which the thing is, is like, this was essentially free promo that she, it's, it's, it's an interesting argument. Like I understand the issue, right? Because on one hand, Michaela doesn't owe this man anything realistically, right? Especially like essentially free promo when you have that many followers, right? She has so many followers. She's so big. Let's say like he was paying for like a sponsored content situation. That would be likely tens of thousands of dollars, I would imagine. I'm not really sure because uh, I am small and not that popular. So my ad reads rates are very, very low compared to hers. And that's the reality of the situation type deal. So there's been debacle, this whole debacle, and there's been a lot of arguments around like, does Kayla, does, does Michaela owe him the review? Does she not? She ended up coming to TikTok and getting a bit mad, saying that this guy was lying and stuff and comes out with this other video. And I will put that response in right now. I don't really like Matthew. Matthew's a really nice guy. I've had good conversations with him. But I find it really unfortunate that he decided to take this issue to TikTok and fabricate a lie in order to prove a point. Am I entirely wrong that I didn't review the Tana when I said I would? Yes. Did I mention him that I didn't get to it? Yes. But still, nonetheless, I should have reviewed the Tana sooner. But to fabricate a lie that when I told him I used his Tana, he says I lied to him and used a spray tan. I've never gotten a spray tan in my life. I, I'd like to brief with that. Second of all, the reason that the tan appeared orange is the same reason I look kind of like really warm and orangey right now. The video has color gradient on it. So if I take the color gradient off of my video, let me show you what I look like. And this was just in a video of me showing my outfit. So if I did a video using the Tana, it wouldn't have color gradient on it, but it was just a random video. So let me take the color gradient off and show you what I actually look like. This is with the color gradient off. Totally different. And yes, I have this Tana on and I'm not orange at all. And I've never gotten a spray tan and I didn't lie. Again, I am completely in the wrong because I should not have told Matthew, oh, I'll do it tomorrow when I when tomorrow came and I couldn't do it. And I did tell him. I did tell him I wasn't able to get to it because I was in a rush. But I was going to get to it. I always get to it. It just sometimes takes a bit. Anyways, he messages me again around, you know, New Year's and lets me know that he had purchased 10,000 units or $10,000 worth of Tana, which I did not advise him to do that. That is a business decision that he made. The fact of the matter is I didn't get to it yet. That's it. I, if you look at my track record of Tana videos, the, t making a Tana video is different than me sitting at my beauty desk. I do them like once or twice a year and I don't tan often at all. Last year I tanned maybe three, four times. So I know that like four months has gone by since I said I would do the review, but I just don't tan a lot and I don't make tanning videos a lot. He cannot rely on me for the success of his brand. He just can't. I just, I don't know what to do in this situation, but I am sorry. I also want to note that from this drama alone, the biggest TikTok, the biggest TikTok talking about this drama has 12.3 million, oh my God, million views. Confirmed on the live stream, he has been able to push all of the stock that he had taken the loan for from Shopify. So that's no longer an issue. He was being a little bit clickbaity with the Michaela cost me $10,000. I think with his strategy, essentially, I think the thought process was if you're not going to give me the review, I will find a way to get myself the popularity that your review would have given me. That seems to be kind of what he was going for, which the ethics around that, I'll let y'all debate that in the comments. And also, I, and I can't find the video, so, you know, take it, it with a grain of salt if you would like. He does state at some point that... He had around 70,000 followers, as opposed to, obviously, Michaela, who had millions. But now he's sitting at around 388,000, I want to say. So, clearly, like, something good has come out of this at the end of the day, which is nice, right? So, even despite this being a somewhat negative situation, Michaela is kind of the face of the TikTok beauty community, for better or for worse, at least at this point. And will draw sales, notoriety, and perhaps, if things remain as messy as they are, infamy. So I, when I do like research for this stuff, because TikTokers, and I've said this before, are big time sneaky deleters. 
I tend to I tend to just go at this point straight to drama channels on YouTube because they actually get the clips as they come out. Are they're able to get them right away. So I don't I don't have to go around trying to dig for re-uploads, trying to dig for whatever. And I'm pretty set in my own opinions. So I'm never really worried about necessarily being swayed or influenced. I also script the parts that relating to my perception in advance as also to not be swayed. So I wouldn't, don't be too, too worried about me if that was a thought. When I was watching, I was watching um, Nick and Dustin on the viewer's voice. They talk about the nature of videos on TikTok existing as promotion pieces, which I thought was so interesting. And I'll put that clip in now. The way she reviews things is usually very positive and structured in a way that's brand friendly, probably because she is looking for a sponsorship. If you're gonna buy a lip liner from the drugstore, it should be this one. It's by NYX and it's my most used lip liner. It's the lip pencil in the shade Natural. See, gorgeous, so flirty, so fresh, and so you still. Since the interface is so different from any other platform, you have the ability to post a review that isn't sponsored. And if the brand sees it and likes your review, they can buy it from you and you can turn it into a physical ad without having to do anything. Most of her reviews feel like that's what she's hoping will happen. And that's why she's so over the top and complimentary towards everything. This brow pencil is foolproof. It's by Maybelline. One side is a powder and the other is a pencil. Manny actually called this out on his podcast. Do you know who annoys me? Who? It's the bitches on TikTok who do sponsorships without disclosing. Okay. And okay. I, I would give specific names, but I really oh, don't want to so get Oh, so there's drama. a person out there that you've seen. I've seen multiple. So it's they're just not like, putting uh, ad or like partner or anything? No, or like they try to make every video seem like an ad. Seem like an ad? Yes. So I, I, I have this like Explain. theory. Explain. I have a theory that sometimes people will quote unquote review products okay. on online on TikTok and they'll review it to be better than what it actually is so that the brand works with them or tries to buy their content. Essentially make an ad for the Making brand. Making an ad for the brand without disclosing it's I not see. technically an ad. But the brand can buy it back to make it into an ad. Wow. So, I, so they're fishing. I, they're they're fishing. fishing. I think there's creators in the beauty space specifically that do that. That's so interesting because back in our time, maybe I didn't notice it, but that wasn't a thing. Because well, we didn't have like, short form content that yeah. you couldn't do that. Like, can't you, do it on YouTube. You couldn't, yeah, on YouTube, you can't like get a brand to buy it for ad. Yeah, it did. No, like they have to sponsor worked. you first and then, yeah, you can't backdrop. But with TikToks, you can save, send, repost, share, sponsor, like put the sponsor on. Like you can do all that kind of you stuff. Do all those things. So influencers have gotten smart. I see. I'll say sneaky. Have, influencers have gotten sneaky mm -hmm. and they're trying to fish an ad out. I, and I think it works. I feel like I've seen it. I'm like, they're totally creating this product and or creating this like thing, this like false sense of like, oh my God, it's a sponsorship, but it's not, but the brand could buy it back. Now also before I elaborate, I am about to run out of powder, like the skin tone one. Can someone recommend me a good loose powder? I'm thinking the Milk Eclipse powder, but I'm not sure yet. I have oily teenager ass greasy skin. So don't give me none of that dry skin girly approved powders. I don't want any of that. I need it to survive military training. Okay. I need like extreme. I need like 2016 baked matte face powder. I don't need any of that other stuff, but I don't need a pink powder yet because I still have a good amount of the pink powder left. So they talk about which Manny also brought up on the full, was it full coverage podcast or whatever? People on TikTok because they can buy, because like the, the videos are such short little pieces of content and don't have to be clipped from anything out of context. They're able to buy the pieces as just promotion. I think the fact that people make, con and then so Manny's alleging that people on TikTok will make content just for somebody to buy it. I genuinely think that's like almost dystopian. The fact that like, so it used to be like, right, you just couldn't trust sponsored content. That was kind of the the run of the mill kind of vibe, right? It's like, well, it's sponsored, you know. People would say like, hashtag not sponsored in order to get rid of any of those allegations. And then people started lying about it even being not sponsored. It just got to a point where genuinely like, what do we have left? What do we have left in this world at the end of the day? Like it is genuinely like horrifying. We have run out of this. Good thing I like it so much, I have a second one. I, I wanna make it as a joke. I'm saying this is a joke, but welcome to the only honest beauty video because I'm really showing you in real time 
me going into a backup because I like this so much. So when we think of this concept of how important these videos are and like for advertisers and for capitalism, not for us. I also kind of think about the response that Michaela made and how unfortunately genius it was because it checks so many commentary community criticizing you boxes at the same time. That's the other thing. A lot of people try to say that like drama channels don't do anything. Drama channels are just like gossip, especially male commentary channels. And that was the point I was trying to make in my H Bomber Guy video. How well that point was made depends on who you ask. Anyway, if you just look at the way that the responses have changed and the way that people decide if they're just going to push forward when they're making content, if they're going to address things, how they address things. And you watch like, let's say like Peter Mon dissecting Shane's apology. If you watch, you know, Nick and Dustin talk about something, if you, who else? What? Uh, if you look at T-Spill talking about something, if you look at all of these, all, all of these different channels in general, there's so many more that I'm just like, for some reason, like drawing a blank on right now. But They've just really formed this certain kind of parameters for what is deemed acceptable or not for an influencer to do when they're trying to respond to things. And there's just a set of boxes that come in, you know, not crying, not wearing a gray hoodie, which is funny because my sweater's gray, not doing a lot of these typical kind of things that were coming up in a lot of apologies, Circa Drama Again 1 with Manny, Laura, Gabriel Zamora, Zamora, and Jeffree Star. This is from an indie brand. Uh, they're not open anymore. I checked before making this video, but I have an eye look I, in mind that I can only use this for because I don't have multiple of the same color usually, unless it's like brown. They don't exist anymore. This one's so old, actually. The last one they were selling for the last year that they were open didn't have the price glitters in it. This is the Midas Cosmetics uh, Flower Bomb Palette. I apologize in advance, but I'm going to try to do a watercolor eye type deal. We'll see what happens. So... When we're talking about those boxes that I was mentioning before, it satisfies the drama age, right? A lot of people wanted to see Miss Michaela, you know, come down on a guy who thinks that she owes him any attention. This serves for the Michaela fans. Also, because it was kind of somebody just asking for like somewhat kind of asking for free promo and it was still wrong of her to lead him on though at the end of the day. So there's obviously like merit to what he's saying and he admits to things a lot of the time. So it's not too bad. Anyway, it, 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 it has that itch, right? Because Michaela didn't really respond to like Lashgate, for example, right? And all she'll do is like kind of in passing bring up some stuff. This is kind of just what she does because that way it's kind of like a laugh it off. Nothing is serious. It's makeup thing, which Glamzilla also does a lot of, but we'll get to that further down the line. It actually kind of gives a positive review of the tan because she says, I'm wearing the tan. <laughs> I can't do the acting, but she's like, I'm wearing the tan and she likes the tan, right? And it looks good on her, I think. I, like I said, have never self-tanned in my life. I don't really know people that do in real life, I don't think. I'm obviously not the self-tanning authority of the world. And she does say that she's sorry to Matthew and how everything turned out, which gives Michaela fans some ammunition that she does respond to drama. So when people on the in the drama community say she doesn't or whatever, they're just clout chasing they're cloud chasing because Michaela is so popular and we're not and yada, 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 whatever. I'm not really a drama channel, I don't think, per like the definition. But again, I think all of that's kind of silly. So call me what you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. Now I'm going to get comments that I'm fat. <laughs> anyway, let's go. So if you hear Gus squeaking too, I also apologize for that in advance. Anyway, so then you have ammunition that yes Michaela responds to drama and takes accountability for things but the thing is is that not doing a free review that you promise someone is a lot lower stakes than some of the other kind of messes that she's found herself in so it's not a, a fair comparison but in the influencer space fair comparison is not really the thing anyone's looking for ever this concept of like how important her voice is in the beauty space and the power that she actually would have if she was going to review his matthews product illusion bronze but also just the concept of honesty in the influencer space and 
all of the issues that come up with these sorts of things. I'm going to elaborate more in the next part, but with Glamzilla, but also just the concept of it and the power in part three. But we move on to Glamzilla and influencer brands and suggestions and things. Glamzilla, for those of you who do not who do not know, is another creator in the beauty influencer space who has a very significant following. But compared to Kayla is keep calling her Kayla, which I don't know why I'm doing that. But compared to Michaela is very small still in the grand scheme of the whole, you know, TikTok beauty royalty type dealios. You know, you've got like the really big people like Michaela, that girl that puts 10 pounds of foundation on her face. I don't know. It's clearly I don't watch a lot of the big ones. There's the one that tries all the foundation shades, like the darkest foundation. I actually kind of like her, but she did the tart trip thing, which is a bit weird, but I digress. Glamzilla has too many, 2 million followers. I, when I followed her, I think... I followed her for a long time because she's also Canadian. And because, like, retail in Canada is, like, kind of silly. And a lot of the time it's really, really hard to find stuff. I wanted to follow Canadian beauty girlies so I could, if they're recommending something, let's say, like, an indie brand. A lot of the time being indie brand specifically is the biggest issue. Is if they ship here or not. <laughs> because the amount of times I've seen somebody promote something. And I say it's from an indie brand and I want to try it. And then I get onto the site and it's like, uh, oopsies, you live in that weird country that's always cold that we don't believe exists because it's not America. Actually, we don't, we don't ship it to you. Obviously, I'm saying that as a huge joke, as satire, because the means is a huge thing. Shipping in Canada, Canada Post is extremely expensive. So if they were just to do, let's say like ground rate in Canada, a lot of these brands, if they don't have any like deals or any shipping services, a ground shipping a ground package from uh, Montreal to Toronto can cost like $30. And a lot of people are not willing to pay $30, $40 in shipping. I've been gossiping too hard because my concealer is creasing. A lot of you might know Glamzilla from the recent Laura Mercier foundation reviews, which she showed how nice the foundation looked on her. The thing is, she has really nice skin, okay? She can claim that she doesn't because she got defensive. There was a girl who reviewed the foundation who had, like, super acne-prone skin. And she was saying that, like, you know, I'm going to test it anyways because, of course, it's going to look good on Glamzilla because she has essentially no imperfections in her skin. And she went into that girl's comments and was like, I have eczema and psoriasis and uh, something else, just rosacea, I think. But the thing is, is that if none of that shows up in the review or none of that is happening at that time, the foundation's gonna sit different. I have acne prone skin, but right now, if someone says your foundation looks really smooth, I'll be like, yeah, because my skin's doing way better than it was before. The most popular video on my channel, which interestingly enough is also about the beauty girls, shows me doing this same process that I'm doing right now. But the makeup does not look as smooth because my acne was really, really bad a year ago. So it's like, I'm not going to claim now if someone says it looks so smooth to be like, oh no, it's not. I have acne prone skin. It's very strange. I'll put that. She actually, I think she deleted that comment because I went back to look for it and couldn't find it. But because I'm smart and I've learned the art of the, um, beauty influencer on TikTok and they're sneaky deleting, I screened that girly right quick. So apparently Glamzilla, I wasn't really paying attention, but I've heard this claimed in several other videos. So again, take this with a grain of salt, had gained a lot of followers due to this review, which this review went mega viral. And then Laura Mercier bought the clip, by the way, something that even though Manny MUA is definitely not honest and protects James Charles LMAO, which is so nuts to me anyway, has a point. After this, she says, oh, I'm planning out content. What do you guys want me to do? I want to look at Jeffree Star's recommendations and Michaela's recommendations, and I really want to try James Charles' painted collection. Hey, so I'm planning out content, and I want to know what you think about this. So after the Laura Mercier went viral, it went viral because so many large creators, like huge people with influence, reviewed the formula. So it popped off. But I want to go buy Jeffree Star's recommendation. I want to buy Michaela's recommendations, and I want to buy... James Charles' new palette. Let's buy Nikki Tutorials' line. I, here's the thing. I already bought Jackie Aina candles. Shout out to you for being the baddest bitch. Like, I want to try out the recommendations. Is it hot fire? Like, I want to know. But before I do so, this is our community. I need to hear from you guys. Are you okay with this? I, I'm very curious and I'm very excited. This is something I'm excited about. Let me know. Is it problematic? Are you going to cancel me? I Don't you? Aren't you curious? Like, aren't you curious? Oh my God. 
okay, let me know. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no alliance. This is just makeup. Ah! Okay, let me know. All right. I apologize for not talking for, through the liner. I can't do it. I'm really bad at it, clearly. And it would only get worse if I even briefly attempted to speak at the same time. It had no comments and then it had comments again. But like all the other ones are gone. So there's like 1700 comments on a thing with like way more views than that. Makes no sense. Anyway, I'll let you investigate that as you may. Glamzilla has been responding, in my opinion, very, very poorly to this whole thing. Making video after video in a way that I'm sorry to say. Oh, this is, by the way, the shade something extra. Playing the victim. She's playing the victim big time. Saying things like we're deciding to cancel her in the sense of people being frustrated with her decision and having their own opinion is a calculated choice to ruin her for some arbitrary reason. Let them know your next move. While you guys are deciding to cancel me or not, let's amplify a small business. The comment section went crazy. The video responses were intense. Um, a lot of people X me out, unfollowed me for asking, what do you guys think if I should review James Charles or Jeffree Star or Nikki Tutorials or Michaela's recommendations, Jackie Ina's candles? I'll, people are very opinionated and I respect that. This is why I asked the question. And um, as someone who creates content and I know things go viral and I know things will sell out if I talk about them. Wow, who would have thought? Um, I thought it was the best thing to ask you guys first because I'm that type of bitch. So I've listened and I've taken it in and I get it. But what's confusing to me is thousands of thousands of people voted on this poll, but the answers are conflicting to what I see in the video responses to the people who are enraged that I would even ask such a question. Let me show you. Anyways, um, what I realized through this is the number one thing I care about is community. Uh, I think we all belong in beauty. And that it's so hard because as a beauty community in a beauty space, we've never been a community. And the only time I've ever felt like we are a community is when shit goes viral. Uh, so that was the Glow Recipe Dew Drops, the Good Apple Foundation, um, Laura Mercier Foundation. Every time I've been able to make something go viral, our community comes together again. Um, so I now know my role in the beauty space. I'm going to amplify BIPOC creators. Fuck yeah. Like the exact same way how I was amplified. Now that I've got a little bit of shine on me, and a little bit more, okay, people get it, um, that Glamzilla is a player. I'm going to take my job seriously. Uh, and I'm going to take my platform and take it to the next level with you guys. Because community is everything. And it's a really bizarre set of videos because Glamzilla then moved on to promoting small businesses. And in this was acting like she duped us. Being like, this is the real move. And... You know, I have, I know my place, I have my power, whatever. After Bria Jones, another bigger influencer who I've talked about before in regard to the Tart Trip scandals. Also, I am trying the Milani tubing mascara. I'm just going to do no brow. I usually do brow wax. I'm not going to do any brow wax just to see if this, how this holds up on its own. Bria said like, Glamzilla, you have so much power in the beauty space now, clearly, because of the Laura Mercier review. So why don't you use that instead of lining the pockets of people who are already obscenely rich and also horrible, do good with this. And then she's like, yep, I'll do that. Before all you tried to cancel me, I was already going to do small business reviews, blah, 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 blah. It's genuinely giving like disgruntled child. I am the worst at applying mascara on earth, I think. So I messed up big time and everything's a mess. Glamzella said starts doing this like scrambling making a whole bunch of videos with small business content which is good i get that and now she's saying she knows her place as the bipoc small business makeup reviewer the issue is is that oh my god i got fallout on my bottom lap how did that even happen this mascara is not going well for me either and says that, but the thing is, is like this sentiment of being a good, you know, makeup reviewer or whatever, really, it, it loses a lot of that, you know, I believe in small businesses, yada, 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 when you're doing it clearly because you're mad that people weren't happy with you. And you're like, it, it really gives like, oh, you've put me in this vice 
And now I have to do it. No, this mascara is ass. <laughs> it's so messy. Like, it's such a mess. Look at that. Like, it's so mad. It's getting everywhere. Like, how does it get all the way on the top of both sides? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm actually really angry because it messed up my eyeshadow. I'll be back in a minute when I fix it. I also want to add that it's been a minute and my lashes have completely fallen. So I'll try this again with my normal brow wax prep. But as it stands now, this mascara, this is the Milani Highly Rated Lash Extensions Tubing Mascara. This is trash. <laughs> this is like really bad. I'm actually going to, when I remove my makeup later, I'm going to just try it again maybe i don't know it's just i'm actually so upset because it's like not only have my lashes fallen they're actually sinking downturned like my lashes are downturned and it's messy anyway glamzilla the victim of the world is saying you know i was always gonna do good it was just you guys who doubted me when i wanted to buy the palette from somebody who allegedly hypothetically in minecraft was sending booty pics to kids, hypothetically, allegedly. Now, now, Mika, what do you have here? You've used this before. And this is from Manny MUA, Redditor Protector Queen. Yes. I also bought this at Canadian Winners. Canadian Winners. Canadian TJ Maxx, which is called Winners. For 15 Canadian dollars, when this retails for 90 Canadian dollars, plus shipping. So, 15 Canadian dollars is 10 American dollars, so I paid... I essentially got this 90% off almost. So I doubt if he got any money, he got like $2. And this is personally just something I've wanted to try for a really long time. And I got it through a more, I guess, less ethically ambiguous way, maybe is the word I'm looking for. So before someone tries to clock me on that. Anyway, because like another thing that has developed recently as a result of this is Glamzilla has started just making a bunch of videos defending Michaela. Just out of nowhere, unprompted, nobody asked. And it's just because in this sort of nature of her making videos in ways that people don't necessarily deem to be super honest, like they feel like they're going to, they're, they're made to be ads. People are starting to compare her to Michaela, and she doesn't like that. And so she's gone on this kind of tirade of defending Michaela. I'll put in a couple of those videos now. While we're talking about amplifying creators, I want to shout out somebody who amplified me, um, who amplified Glamzilla when I was growing on TikTok. Michaela, that's you, girl. Um, I love you, and you know I, I love you. Uh, oh, I wanna cry. <laughs> she, at the beginning of my TikTok journey, stitched so many of my videos, and it helped me get a bunch of you who's watching now. Um, she really helped me grow, and, and not only because she stitched videos or commented on my videos or reposted, she helped me as a friend on the side for so many things. She helped me get on PR lists, she helped me get off blacklists. Um, and she has been a really good friend to me, and I just want to publicly give you your flowers, girl. I love you. And I hope one day I can do that for any of you watching, um, because that's how community works. I love And if that isn't what beauty or girl power is about, I don't know what it is. Like, come on. But I will say, I purchased from so many small businesses. I spent a lot of money. Use no discount code so the money goes directly to you, okay? I love you guys so much, but I'm going to say something that people might not like. I'm not trying to get clicks just because I use a small business. I'm not trying to sell you out. I'm not gonna feature your shit if it's not hot fire. Straight up. Small business or not, you need to your products need to perform better than a Maybelline or an Anastasia Beverly Hills for me to feature it. Because because it's not worth me losing the the trust of my viewer. If my viewer is gonna support your small business, it better be fucking good. Like I want their money to it, why would I tell them to buy your small business if they, I know Maybelline will work? So that's the hard part. Okay, so don't get excited. I, I'm only gonna feature shit I really, really like. Uh, cause that's me. And while the eyes are still on me, I challenge all of the content creators that follow me, all of my, all the people that fuck with me, all the people who don't. I challenge you to stitch BIPOC content creators with me all year long, all year long. Like let's amplify voices. Let's bring people up. If you believe in somebody, support them, whether it's a small business, whether it's a creator. And I want to remind you, even though you've got millions of followers already, you're still that girl that had 10 K on an app on a phone. Okay? And we all are. Um, use your power wisely. 
What I think makes me sad about Glamzilla is that I feel like I'm watching someone that I liked initially turning into this very like run of the mill beauty influencer. You know, you always want them to be different and then they never are. You know, there's a super interesting phenomenon I've kind of seen emerge on TikTok that people are calling the influencer lobotomy, <laughs> which is this idea that it refers to when someone makes videos, typically those relating to recommending products, that they almost kind of become robotic or they're clearly performing in a way that's kind of almost void of like human nature. Like it's as if it's like that movie, what's it called? Something of the brain swappers or something or brain snatchers, you know? And what they've done is instead of it just being like aliens from another country, it's like people advertising like the Dior backstage blush. They just have this like overreactive sense or like they're the lobotomy one refers to specifically like this like nature where people stare dead like into the camera and they're like my new late night snack obsession i don't know whether i'm late to this whether people are doing this already or not but hold on let me try it well i also just would never do that and like some people say like you know everybody says that and then they wouldn't i am so vehemently against that nature entirely that i would just probably get a real job before i'd get to that level Anyway, I don't want to say influence is not a real job. You know what I mean? Typical job? I don't know. Anyway. Guys, look at this new palette that I got. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the colors. Wow. I got to give it a swatch. Oh my God. Like that kind of thing. That's the sort of influencer lobotomy vibe that people are discussing. So I'm actually going to put a glitter on my eye now that I've opened this again. I actually don't mind a press glitter if you scatter it very thinly, but there is a term for the influencer lobotomy phenomenon, specifically in the beauty guru space, which I believe someone has called it the beauty guru gasp. Uh, if anyone knows who originated that, I would like to know. I don't really know where it came from, but I digress. Glamzilla and Michaela are huge with these sorts of beauty guru gasp, kind of weirdly exaggerated videos it really just watching this happen with like glamzilla has really made me feel like nobody is safe <laughs> and my whole life will just boil down to never being able to have happiness ever again i'm kidding but at the same time it's like will there ever be an influence why i'm doing that like a swatch i'm actually just trying to warm it up i <laughs> i just feel like it's really something that has become a really huge issue. In this, I have a list of influencers that I'm gonna, well, they're not influencers, they're people who make content. Some of them are influencers, a couple of the bigger ones, but very few of them actually are. Really at this point, a lot of them still have like regular schmegular jobs, but I'm going to recommend who I've been watching on TikTok, who isn't in this sort of mentality at this time. With Glamzilla showing these signs of the telltale influencer, I feel like this is another one of those times where we need to kind of come together as a community and try to really uplift a lot of these people. If you do end up following any of these people, I would really love if you told them I sent you just because I want them to know that I appreciate them besides just my follows and my interactions I normally have with them. So I'm going to tag them all down below. If I max out the kind of amount of characters that I'm allowed in the YouTube description, I will begin to uh, make it as a sort of Google Doc instead. So let's get right into the news. Before I forget, the highlight is Fenty Beauty Matchstick in Confetti, which I bought in like 2019 and is still rocking. So I don't want to know what's growing on it. Please don't tell me. Chemists in the audience, I don't want to know. Now, here are the list of people that I recommend. I'm going to speed run this and I will have all of, I have a screenshot of all their accounts on screen. So we've got... And if I pronounce any of them wrong, please, I'm so sorry. Cakeface Hannah, uh, at Knock No Fury, at Gabriella Rongstad, at A Summer Miracle, at Cora Libulus, underscore at the end, at Eden.Kathleen, at Julie Annie, at Ty Mars, at Angelica Y. Park, at Miss Mayaya, at Green Eggs and Glam, at Amanda Frisch, at 
Lynn's makeup looks at La Vida Rosa, at Glam Geo underscore NYC, at Geo Film This, and at Chloe Noble dot MUA. So these are all people that I watch on TikTok that I find have either more unique content or more honest content or uplift more indie brands or just in general sort of have a kind of better grip on humanistic elements in the space that I feel like are becoming more and more rare by the day. So these are all creators like uh, on TikTok that I watch and enjoy and find that they do not fall into these tropes that I mentioned. But with this, we'll move on to part three. By the way, that was the Milk Lip Oil in Odyssey. So part three is just an overall reflection on the power of the beauty influencer dollar. So in order to solidify like what I'm thinking, I'm going to take us down like a trip down memory lane in the beauty influencer space and talk about some numbers and some collaborations that have existed prior. So let's start with one of the first influencer collabs ever, the Becca X Jaclyn Hill champagne pop highlighter. Both people in which both brands, because there's also Jaclyn Hill cosmetics that no longer exist anymore. So you want to know how big that shift has been. But a lot of that, I believe, was also because of the pandemic. But so sourcing is limited on a lot of these things and often even not present, which I apologize in advance. A lot of people don't want us in their bag. The only source I could find was from WWD.com that says the, ba- the Becca X Jacqueline collab sold out in two hours with 3.5 million in sales. That's upon the first launch. That's not any of the extra that came through. Then you've got Jaclyn Hill X Morphe, which sold 1 million units. So let's take the cost of one of the palettes and multiply it by a million, which makes 38 million. Next, you have Morphe X James Charles. That does not actually tell you how many units it sold, but is compared to the success of the Jaclyn Hill palette, which at $39, if even similar, would make 39 million, but we could be generous and say 30 million. Then next, you have the Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette, which generated $35 million in revenue upon launch, according to the Morphe executives in the Shane Dawson documentary series thing. There is no specifics on Michaela's collabs. Not surprising. I think this is because of the newfound awareness of people not wanting to have millions of dollars waved in their face while they have to work grueling jobs just to be able to even afford some of these collabs. From the three collabs that we have info on, realistically, or the four rather, we have about 100 million in sales. Human influence as a means of commerce has existed far before the internet and people have seeked honest interaction during shopping experiences for pretty much as long as buying things has existed with relatability between consumer to consumer as opposed to trying to relate to what is shown to you in an advertisement from seller to consumer. Even throughout history, people lusted over what lipsticks celebrities were wearing. People wanted to know what shade Marilyn Monroe would wear a lot of the time. There was a lot of famous lipsticks that like Drew Barrymore would wear that Mac would then sell. And people were kind of looking into that. Or if you even remember, just the very, very beginning of the beauty community blowing up, everyone wanting that Mac lip liner that Kylie Jenner was wearing because Kylie Jenner wouldn't admit that she got lip filler. Remember, even like there was makeup sections in Seventeen magazine or those other like tween magazines that they sold at the uh, checkout of a grocery store. An article from Forbes says that in 2019, influencer marketing costs or expenditure rather from big companies went to eight billion dollars and has only really gone up since I can imagine. And this was up from two billion in 2017. And this is all to say that influencer marketing clearly works. So that means the if there's an, if it's an eight billion dollar in 2019, and again as I mentioned, probably higher now, industry from just the word of these people who are sitting there and doing makeup, it's something that is substantial. So Glamzilla is not is refusing to indulge in the rhetoric around how substantial this is, while ignoring the facts that are immediately in front of her. From the, presented from the people that have given her this platform in the first place and is now trying to divert attention through using these small brands. And while it's good for them to be brought to bigger audiences, a lot of them are very happy about it. There was Jean-Luc Cosmetics, there was Cheekbone Beauty, both of which actually um, I've bought to send to Cake Face Hannah. And she has TikToks that are way more honest and not driven from this, in my opinion, more honest, not driven from this sense of evading that responsibility. I sent her products from both of those brands. So I'll actually tag that specific TikTok if I can find it down below where she tries them out. And the Cheekbone Beauty specifically, there's this blush bronzer that comes in like a 
10. She really likes that one. So influencer marketing in reality at this point, as I mentioned before, with the trying to get content to be bought, expands far beyond sponsored content. And since the scandals relating to Morphe affiliate codes in 2018, the reality around how much they make has really put a distaste in people's mouths, right? And this is just in a world where people are just looking for makeup recommendations. People who like playing with makeup want honest recommendations and they just become harder and harder to find, which is why I've always tagged my makeup in the description because it's clear that I'm not making any money from these brands. I would like to work with makeup brands just because I would like to be able to experiment with more products and I just can't afford it. Honestly, like I have this, one of my newest products where is the uh, House Labs Foundation. This was bought with a gift card. I didn't pay for this with my own money and I couldn't really afford to pay with this for this with my own money because this is like 60 something Canadian dollars. I'm trying to give people while doing the commentary like an honest place to look for kind of like makeup recommendations and things like that. And you'll look, I actually have, there's a thing on YouTube that you can do if those of you who don't know where your description box will just automatically generate the same thing every time. I have my base set products in that automatically generating thing because they're such tried and trues for me that I'm always using them. So it's it's why people like Michaela and Glamzilla get under fire so much It's because they're also making these videos that are blurring these lines between that sponsored content and that unsponsored content. And this is not even to mention like the borderline, if not full blown FTC guideline vi violations, where if they do a video that is sponsored, it's like hard to find the the link. I'll try to find an example in real time, actually, because I feel like I can. Yep, literally the first video. So this is a video and we're in real time. It is 4.37 p.m. on my fancy little iPhone. So Glamzilla. So at least this one says paid partnership on the bottom real tiny, but that's a new feature that TikTok has. You actually have to click the more button. I'm having trouble doing it to expand it. And then right at the bottom in really tiny, it says AF partner, which is for about face partner. And honestly, I only really know that because I know a couple of other people that work with that brand. And actually, that's why. Um, if you saw on screen when I was doing my lip, it says like sent to me. It's because my friend, uh, Cake Face Hannah, who I mentioned before, gets PR from them. When she has excess PR, she sends it to me sometimes if I want some of it. It's like genuinely mind boggling that I bring up that example and literally the second I pull it up, it's right there. Money is tight. Normal people don't even often have the money to restock often let alone be fooled into getting products that aren't even good because of sponsored content. There's even been side-by-side -side videos of Michaela do looking at something before she was famous and then getting sponsor review for it and how different that reaction is. Now, you could argue that maybe she changed the mind on the product, but it's weird when it's that different, right? I just think a lot of these things have really divulged into people no longer really understanding since, like, since it's been a few years since it's been a big concept, the true value of the influencer sponsor and the influencer dollar and the attention and instead just turn this into a perpetual victimization that's like, you're always just coming for my bag. It's like, no, it's because you shouldn't be doing these things dishonestly when your whole platform and the whole job is based on inter per, or, uh, entre, uh, interpersonal interactions with your audiences. Tell me your thoughts. I'm going to conclude there. Link sources, all that kind of stuff all down below. Everyone should be tagged down below as well. They'll have links to their TikTok accounts. And I hope you all have an amazing day. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.